tutorial. This is just going to show you some simple types of puppets and the way you can put them together out of objects that you might have lying around the house or you might get from a craft store. Pretty simple stuff. Um, there are three types of puppets I'm going to show you. The first type is a simple sock puppet. So this is what I made a little while ago. He looks very simple. Um, it'll be good for a show or something you can make a few of and make a little stage, something like that. And then you could record them. You can see he has a simple kind of face. He has a mouth that will open and close. And he has your typical eyes that you might find on a lot of puppets. Um, and he is made from two stripy socks, basically. Um, so you can see how the first sock forms most of his body from the throat area. That's the top of the sock, the part that would go around your thigh, and then cut off about down the bottom. And then the um, mouth is made out of the toe of the sock that's cut off, that's placed around your hand, and then you just sew it on in place. And these are from another pair, the other one of the pair of socks. Um, you basically just make a tube and stuff it. And when you stuff any of these things I'm going to show you, you can use stuffing like from a craft store, or you could use bundled up fabric, or basically whatever you have. Now the eyes are ping pong balls. That's pretty much a very useful item. And you can get those from a pound store or anywhere like that, sports supply store. And um, your friend when making puppets a lot of the time is the hot glue gun which um, you can use to glue the um, ping pong balls onto the head and um, just basically add details like um, feather boa like this which you can get again from a craft store I have yeah, thank you for the help um, I have a jar here you can get all kinds of colours and this great makes great hair, fur or basically anything fluffy that you can think of you can put it on these puppets now, when you're doing the eyes, it's quite important to have a easily directable and um, movable pupil. So if anything goes wrong when you're positioning them, you can just like pop it off and try again. And I found that a great thing to use for those are these things. Now, you can get these in hardware stores. They're supposed to be for protecting your floor from the bottoms of chair legs. So they're little felt pads and they're sticky on the um, one side so you can just pop those off and stick them on as pupils and that's what I've done here. You can also get bigger ones and these ones are from a fabric store and they're actually velcro dots for fasteners and they are also sticky on the back and they're slightly bigger and they're black so you can get some different variations of size and colour for pupils there. Or if you can't find those you could literally just draw it on, draw on a pupil um, you just have to be careful because obviously you only get one shot at that. And the second type of puppet I'm going to show you is slightly more complicated but in the same family. Now this is a hand puppet like you might see on TV and um, takes a bit more work and a few more um, ingredients are involved but basically the same kind of thing. You can see the same basic components. You've got um, You've got ping pong ball eyes, you have a nose. Now, I believe this one's nose is made of a polystyrene ball, like you can get in a craft shop, and that's cut in half with fleece, like you can get in any fabric store, or you can cut up an old pair of gym pants or something. Um, fleece stretched over and sewn at the back to give this kind of flat, fleecy appearance for the nose. You've got fun fur, which you can get anywhere if you don't have, if you don't want to go and buy a bunch of fur. If you don't want to go and buy a bunch of fur from craft store, you could just cut up an old toy or something like that. Um, you can get loads of different kinds of fur from, for, for that kind of thing. Now the mouth is probably the most difficult part because it needs to be very resilient. Because you're going to be opening and closing this a lot. 
and um, if you don't use something sturdy it's going to slowly wear through and you'll end up with a mouth that's in two parts which will be too flimsy to use. So there are a few things you can use but in this case I used a juice box like um, a carton of orange juice or something from the supermarket. Um, when it's empty you can wash it out, you can open up the box and you'll find that inside it's reinforced with a kind of like a, an aluminium so it's actually a very kind of hard wearing tough material that you can then cut a simple oval out of to fold in half to make your simple snappy thing that then you turn into the mouth and that's been coated with felt again cut in an oval and stuck on the juice box material to make a sandwich and then you have a small piece of foam another thing you can get from a craft store um, this kind of thin foam that you can cut and glue, hot glue again and making the head is just a process of cutting out the shapes of the head and then sewing them together and then hot gluing it around the mouth and if you need pattern pieces for that you can get them from several sites on the internet just uh, if you google um, Muppet Muppet um, pattern pieces or something similar you will probably get something that you can use for that. Now to make the structure of the body ooh, <laughs> you'll need something like this and this is the kind of tubing you can get from a hardware store for pipe lagging. It'll come in a big long grey thing that looks like a pool noodle and you can cut it up make it into a hoop to give your puppet bodies some kind of resilience. He has he has a T shape going over here, up over into his arms, just to give him some strength. And he has a hoop to give his body around the bottom some strength. And then for the rest of the body you can basically use baby clothes or um, very young child's clothes just to choose what you want, what you think will give him some personality and um, just dress him up because this one his body and his his fur body ends around here and everything beneath is just the child's clothes I think it's like a, a little t-shirt and a hoodie and a little uh, necklace at the top so pretty simple let the, the 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 baby clothes already have a body shape so that does your work for you and then you stuff the arms and at the end just cut out a little hand shape, two of them, sew them together and stuff so you have little arm paws and then you just attach them to the ends of the um, sleeves so you can't see the join. Um, this kind of puppet is quite, once you put all the pieces together it's quite um, long lasting. This one's about 10 years old and he still looks pretty good. Nothing is going to really fall apart there unless you give it a tough time when you're performing. When you're performing with these, there's one other element that you need, and that's something like this. This is the arm control. Um, obviously, when you have one arm controlling the mouth, you can't have both arms working at once unless you have a second person. So you would put his hand in his pocket or something to look quite natural, and then you would attach the hook on the end of this little wire doohickey to the hand so you can control it from the bottom. You can see I've put a little foam bit to hold on to there. And this is actually a wire coat hanger. Just bent with a pair of pliers. Cut. Be very careful when cutting that because it's pretty tough stuff. But once you've got like a little hook shape then that basically is all you need to control the arm and just do the actions that you want him to make. Now lastly we have a more complicated type of puppet and this is if you really wanted to put in some time to make it like um, an art piece or something that will last. This is a rod puppet and this one again about 10 years old so they last as well as long as you, you don't bash them around. Now, rod puppets are again they're a simple idea but you can spend a long time getting them to look good, getting the um, pieces very nicely made, 
crafting and painting. You can take as much time as you want. I'm going to show you the basic components and how you can put them together to make this kind of puppet that you can control from the back. And if you want to make a, a small rod um, structure to control the hands the same way as you did with the Muppet type puppet, then you can do that as well. The hard parts of the body are the hands, the head and neck and the feet and you can make them out of any kind of clay. Um, this is Sculpey and it's a polymer clay which means it's basically a plastic and you can bake it in um, the oven. So you mould it and um, bake it in the oven and when it's done you can paint it. It's very hard it can break, it's a little brittle, but it's um, probably the most resilient thing you can use in terms of um, clays. Now this is an air dry clay, Daz. It's um, easier to work with, but it's also messier, and you'll find that um, when it's done, it has a rougher look and it can be more fragile. So. It, it depends what you're going to be doing with the puppet. If you need it to be a bit less prone to breaking, go with um, Sculpey. I would also say with this kind of puppet, be very careful when you make small, thin things like thumbs, fingers, ears, things that stick out a lot because um, they will break um, if you're doing any kind of like hurry, um, hurried movements, a quick performance and you just like bang it against the set or something, you'll lose its nose and that's not something you want to happen. Um, you could use anything to make hair, anything that kind of texture. You could use wool or um, fabric. I have um, wool locks which you can get um, online or from I think sometimes farm shops have them because they're basically dyed sheep's wool and they make a great hair-like texture and you can get them in amazing colours. And again that's just stuck to the head with some hot glue. Um, the eyes, um, you can just sculpt them and leave them as is. If you want to give them a bit of shine, you can use something like this, which is a lacquer um, that's supposed to make any surface that you put it on look shiny and wet. That can be useful for things like that. Also lips. Um, or if you don't want to get like a, a specialised product, you can just use clear nail varnish. That has the same kind of effect, although it might go sticky after the puppet's like been in use for a long time. You might have to clean it off and reapply. And you can see Aglet here has some um, very luxurious eyelashes, and there's a reason for that. They are fake eyelashes. Again, another product you can get in Poundland or anything like that that's um, has a very natural, realistic look, and it has it adds quite a lot to the face if you if you're making a human puppet. And again, the clothes of this kind of puppet you can make out of anything you like. Um, here I've used mostly socks, um, I think sleeve of a jumper, anything like that. You can get um, from clothes from a charity shop, you cut them up, Here's some socks that will make a great stripy leggings and stuff like that. Basically, I find that if you just look at some materials, you will probably be inspired by the texture to um, to think of some clothes that the character that you're making might like to wear and just go from there. And it's not anything complicated in terms of tailoring or anything, it's literally tubes sewn, sewn on from the back so you can't see the join. So in terms of the structure of a puppet like this's body, um, this is one, this is an unfinished one, um, but around the same structure. It's basically a series of tubes made from stockinette or stockings. Most of this is tights, like you can get from a pound store or anything like that. Um, sewn along the joins where you want the limbs to bend. You want to make sure you define the knees and elbows, otherwise when you're trying to move the it from the hands, it won't bend where you want and it'll have like a noodle arm appearance, which might give you a good effect, but in this case, for a more human look, it's good to have that natural limb movement. Again, you have the uh, hands, 
made from Sculpey. You can see where they have been attached and glued in place. And the neck and how that's been glued and sewn so it can't escape from the hole. And um, you have hair on this one that's made from actual, I think, a hair extension and just wefts glued on to give the appearance of a wig. And you can see here, um, with a pair of jeans, a piece that I cut off, I'm actually in the process of making a pair of jeans, for him just by sewing it straight onto the leg. You can see where I've gotten halfway up and I'm sewing the pieces on one by one. So you don't need to do any pattern pieces or um, anything like that for the clothes for this kind of puppet. It's all about the appearance and they're not going to come off so you don't have to worry about that. I hope this has helped to give you some ideas and um, basically any kind of household fabric, material, um, things you can find in a recycling bin, anything like that can be repurposed into the structure of a puppet. So it's fun to experiment and um, find things you wouldn't necessarily have looked at before and think, um, oh, that would be that would be good in a puppet. Once you um, start doing that, you won't be able to stop. So um, good luck and I hope you have fun puppeteering.